The topics I cover in my videos, for the most part, have a fine line between reality and fiction. But no matter how real they may feel, there's always just something that gives it away. The topic I'm covering today, however, went out of its way to create a world so close to our reality, it even had the most hardcore fans skeptical on whether or not what they were playing was actually real. And it all began with a simple Facebook friend request. This just didn't smell like anything. It was as hard as anything I've ever done, I mean, creatively. I mean, it was, it was running a marathon. The earliest reports began on June 17th, 2009. Hundreds of people across the world received a friend request from a woman claiming to be from Russia, living in an underground facility. I've been approached by a mysterious Junko Junsai yesterday who requested to become a contact of mine on Facebook. Sounds interesting. What is the feel on this one? Something about it is off. I find it highly unlikely that this is an ARG. It seems more like she's just a very pretty, very eccentric Russian woman. The Facebook account was called Junko Junsui, but the woman behind the account was called Vera. Once the account added people as her friend, she began messaging them privately, calling out to anyone who would listen, claiming that one of her sisters was missing. After keeping a close eye on Junko's page, along with her updates on the situation, she linked us to a video, which was an advert for a genetic enhancement company called Nippon Chinesi, which have their own website and is based in Japan. The advertisement featured a genetically engineered individual named Junko. The Japanese company claimed that Junko is the next step in human evolution. For countless millennia, humans have evolved unconsciously, spreading out to populate the world. For the first time ever, we may glimpse our long genetic inheritance, and from it, we may plot the path by which we wish to continue. Junko is the first child of her type ever to be born. She and the other Junsui are the children of all mankind. Zen. Through the new technology of genetic target augmentation, Junko has been gifted with only the most optimal human alleles. Junsai are the best of all we have ever been, and therefore represent the best way of coping with an uncertain future. The advertisement glitches out several times before eventually cutting off and leaving us with this piece of text. This is not the end. This is how it begins. We are ready to sacrifice ourselves to light the world. If your body is your enemy's property, then you can strike back at your enemy through your body. Your body is a matchstick, ready to catch fire. This is not the end. During this advert, the Japanese company also stated this woman belongs to a subspecies of human females that they call the Junsui. What's different between a Junsui and a normal human female, you may ask? Well, the Junsui possess three X chromosomes compared to the ordinary female who only possessed two. According to a brief description of this subspecies, most Junsui exhibit accelerated mental and physical maturation due to their condition. Junsui are highly social and display gifts for both empathy and communication. Their origins are actually traceable to an early branch of Homo sapiens. It is suggested that a lot of strong female icons from history were actually a Junsui. One of the biggest examples of this are from a group of Circassian women who were sold into slavery during the mid-19th century. These women are portrayed in literature as possessing superhuman beauty and charm. One particular female that stood out from the rest was a princess known as Guashamasha. The Japanese company discovered this subspecies of human females during the 1990s and quickly kickstarted a new research initiative called the Junsui Project. They began experimenting with these females' as DNA to incorporate their genetics into future children. Junko, who we see multiple times on the website, is the first successful genetically modified human using the Junsui's DNA. The only problem with their experiment so far is that Junko is unable to become pregnant. Further research is needed. While there seemed to be a lot of promise for the future of this company and the human race after this discovery, it was unfortunately short-lived. 
In 2001, a mysterious organization came around the corner and bought out the company. All advertising and research the company had discovered about the Junsui was pulled from the general public. So who are these mysterious people that bought out the company, and why did they decide to hide this groundbreaking technology from the public domain? After the strange Japanese video finished, another video instantly began playing featuring another woman, but this time giving us no context on what we were witnessing. During the video, four coordinates were found, and when mapped out on Google Earth, it created a straight line. After the video ended, if you tried to play both videos again, you will be greeted with an error page. Most people at this point would have probably just left, thinking nothing of it. But if you chose to stay and looked around a little longer, you would eventually find two words the enemy. By clicking on the two words, it would take you to a website that looks exactly like Google. This wasn't actually Google, of course, it was all still part of the game. By typing in the enemy into the search bar, it would take you to a website for a Russian security firm called Alpha Center, offering their services for any kind of company or organization. We supply specialized hardware and personnel with highly professional operational and tactical skills, including combat experience. The website gave us past and present information about this fictional company, including contact information in case you wanted to reach out and apply for a job. But it seems there was a lot more than meets the eye when talking about Alpha Center, especially since we found this website by typing in the enemy on a previous website. If we go back to the fake Google page, but this time type in Alpha Center into the search bar, we are greeted with a live security feed featuring a young woman trapped in a white room. The live security feed of the white room would last for only 15 minutes every day before cutting out, making it even harder for people to find out if the footage was just on repeat. The woman in this white room was called Rhea. We can find this information by hacking into the Alpha Center website, which brings up classified files with this woman's picture and description. It turns out that Rhea is a living Junsui, locked away by Alpha Center. If we dive deeper into this security firm, we can also find footage of this same woman being interrogated by Alpha Center officers, asking her questions about her past relationships. Let's continue. I want to discuss your old relationship. Let's get back to the man. On the 6th of July, half past eight, you were with him? But why? What exactly has this woman done to deserve to be interrogated and locked away in such a small room? If we remember the Facebook page that began mass friending everyone on Facebook, one of the interesting things that stood out to people was the woman was claiming her sister was missing. It's pretty much safe to say at this point that the missing sister is the one locked away by Alpha Center. Which means the woman behind the Facebook page, Vera, is a Junsui too. After the reveal of the woman in the white room, hundreds of thousands of people had now been drawn to this event, including a group of users on the Unfiction forums who referred to this bizarre scenario as an alternate reality game, which basically means a fictional story presented in a realistic manner. This strange game continued for a couple of months before it came to a close. During that time, it featured Chilean hackers, backstories for Alpha Center officers, and also a terrorist organization called the Sisterhood. Many people are unaware of what actually happened during 2009, and what exactly was the story. Thankfully, those questions were somewhat answered in 2014. Hi, I'm August. Welcome to the show where we explore ideas in the future. My guest today is Rob Otten. He created essentially a fake conspiracy narrative that took place over various social media platforms. So Rob, great to have you on the show. Hey, August. Well, thank you for having me. We have these people and we're like, okay, what's cool about this stuff is that it you know, makes a lot of noise, people get excited, but very quickly as the story evolves, people get confused. Did you ever figure out how to monetized and turn it into a so, business? So that, was, so that was so phase two, right? We went around and we said like, hey, I think we could create some software that took not all, but the lion's share of all the rote, dumb stuff that you know kept everybody up all night mm -hmm. during the kind of live ops portion of the game right. and offload it to this back end. In 2014, 
2014, the creators of Junko Junsui released an iPhone app called Alpha Archive, which was designed to make you, the player, feel like you were hacking into a classified area, revealing Russian documents no one was supposed to see. It even linked you to several websites to explore. All were fictional, of course, but many users didn't realize this, as the app was blasted with negative reviews, thinking they were being watched by the government after using it. You know, we had a lot of reviews for the game, people basically saying like, you know, I am resetting my iPod or returning it to the manufacturer. <laughs> I want everything or my, my iPad, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna wipe it. Like, for I don't, real. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like don't worried, download this app. They were worried that there's, yeah, I did see One some One star, that. don't touch it. So they were it. worried that there was something actually real and legitimate happening. Well, so, I mean, so some of it's our fault. The biggest part about this app was that you could find journals written by the character Rhea the woman in the white room. There were six levels to access, and over a hundred pages from Rhea's journal, including files documented by Alpha Center that told the story of her childhood, all the way to 2009, explaining how she ended up in the white room. The files were all in Russian, but they did provide English translations on the app. From the beginning we were sisters, and we swore we would always be sisters. We slept always side by side, the oldest was Vera, then Oksana, then me. We swore we would live together always. Remember the Japanese biotech company that made genetically modified children, but then was mysteriously shut down in 2001? Well, it turns out the organization that bought out the company and shut it down was Alpha Center's parent company, Alpha Order, a Russian oligarchy that owns several subsidiary companies, including Alpha Center. This Russian organization bought out the Japanese company, shut it down, and took all of their research to an underground facility where they began experimenting in secret. Inside the secret laboratory, they created their own genetically modified Junsui children and began raising them. They cut them off from the outside world, brainwashing them into doing their bidding teaching them how to use their abilities for the good of the Russian government. They were weaponizing them. We were always learning and being quizzed upon new knowledge, after all. As I sit alone in this room, I now realize that even our love for each other at the time had been turned into a test. We believed we were beating them at their own game by supporting each other after the 10th year. Rhea was one of the huge group of Junsui who were created by Alpha Center, they grew up inside an underground facility, more specifically in a section that was called Alkino 2, otherwise known as School 3. Rhea grew up there with her sisters, learning how to use their abilities as a weapon by the Russian government. The Junsui children learned how to analyze microfacial expressions and body movements that no ordinary human could pick up on. Basically, the Junsui children were capable of becoming Sherlock Holmes, but better. As they grew older, they would become spies for Alpha Center, seducing men of power into giving their secrets or providing distractions while certain events took place. What I needed from him was simple. I was to find out with some degree of certainty if this Mr. Mazane had secured a joint venture drilling project with the Ugandans in the past 48 hours. Rhea was their greatest spy. She even states in her journals that when a tough challenge comes along, Alpha Center always sent her to complete the mission over everyone else. I was the one girl in school number three who was specially sent whenever something difficult needed to be extracted she was the best they had. But that all changed after one mission. Rhea had slept with a man for three days, who she was ordered to distract while negotiations took place without him knowing. But once he was finally gone, he left something behind in her room. I think I heard its noise come and go a few times, but ignored it. When I realized it was coming from my own bathroom, I went to go look. The electric window was attached to the wall, right where my hair dryer would normally go. It had a screen that glowed when I touched it, but it was not warm. It was so beautiful that I immediately took it back to bed. I knew immediately that it was a thing never intended for me to see, and yet I kept it. Rhea had discovered the internet. She had never seen anything like it. The only world she knew was inside School 3. She decided to smuggle the device back to her sisters, who began to explore it too. The window often showed us videos or photographs from people who were always alone. They talked about the most senseless things, and there were conversations below each of these where people said the most horrible things to complete strangers, 
and everybody seemed to be enjoying it. After a week of exploring the internet, they finally started to find their feet and began understanding how it worked. This is where the Junsui sisters came across the Japanese biotech company who started the whole thing. Their eldest sister, known as Vera, found out about her Junsui heritage and learned about the history of strong female figures who were believed to be Junsui. Vera began telling stories to her sisters about the magical world outside of School 3 and how their ancestors became strong female leaders. Vera was creating her own religion, a religion that would soon rebel against the notorious oligarchy known as Alpha Order. Vera told us that we were the Jansui, and how we spread across the world and throughout time, slowly becoming lost. Vera created a Facebook page and named it after the first child made by the Japanese biotech company, Junko. She also added Junsui onto the end, representing who she and the rest of her sisters were. She reached out to the people across the world, attempting to discover what else Alpha Center had been hiding from them. I've been approached by a mysterious Junko Junsai yesterday who requested to become a contact of mine on Facebook. Sounds interesting. What is the feel on this one? Something about it is... off. I find it highly unlikely that this is an ARG. It seems more like she's just a very pretty, very eccentric Russian woman. It wasn't long though, before everything started to fall apart. One night, officers came into the room where Rhea slept and took her away. Upon reading the journals written by Rhea in the white room, she mentions a few times that she feels unwell. Even in the security footage, we witness one moment where she throws up. She believed Alpha Center must be doing something to her, maybe punishing her because she found the electronic window? Actually, if we read some of the medical reports made by Alpha Center, which were also found on the Alpha Archive app, it turns out that Rhea is pregnant. If you remember what I said at the start of the video, the genetically modified Junsui can't get pregnant. So how is this possible? Alpha Center have taken her away and closed her off because they not only want the baby to be okay, they want to know how this was possible. However, they never told Vera or any of the sisters why Rhea disappeared. They never told them anything according to the journals. But the difference this time is that Alpha Center didn't know the sisters had access to the internet. Because Vera didn't know what was happening, she turned to the internet in retaliation. She reached out to anyone who would listen and started to take action with her rebellion against Alpha Center and Alpha Order. The Junsui sisters began a plan of attack and started fighting against Alpha officers, taking over School 3 headquarters. In the Alpha Archive app, we find documents featuring the timeline of events when Vera and her sisters rebelled and took over the School 3 facility. On 4909 at approximately 6.10 a.m., a group of criminal insurrectionists succeed in the breach and takeover of a small portion of the Alkino 2 facility in Bashkortostan, designated School Number 3. Here's a timeline of events. 3.15. Hostiles block all remote access to School Number 3 network, presumably with assistance from Dr. Krivinov. 6.30. Hostile Oksana Konstantinova demonstrates that group has access to Belyev Laboratories and threatens to destroy it if operators do not vacate beyond Rail Link Tunnel and its surrounding corridors. 7.54. Hostiles enter Rail Link Tunnel connecting School Number 3 and Number 4. Day 4. 17.909. 648 to 658. Alpha provides hostile Kita Yaroslavia with decoy password data in preparation for Operation Clear Passage. 7 o'clock. Incorrectly believing they have disabled all sectors of the Alkino 2 surveillance and security network, hostiles attempt entry of school number 4 at door 117 South. 701. Tactical component of Operation Clear Passage results in elimination of all six remaining hostiles in Rail Link Tunnel area. 2240. Facility is declared clear of all hostiles. Current investigation begins. According to the death toll made by Alpha Center officers, most Junsui, such as Vera, were now deceased. However, some were reported missing. These missing Junsui survived and formed a group together outside of Alpha Order called the Sisterhood and began reaching out to people across the world. Alpha Order are still looking for the Sisterhood to this day. They have announced to the public that the Sisterhood are terrorists and should stay well away. But what happened to Rhea, you may ask? 
Well, diving deeper into the Alpha Archive app, we find images from a spy lens claiming to have been taken in 2014, featuring a woman heavily guarded by Alpha Center officers carrying a baby. This is very clearly Rhea, and she's not the only one that survived. Alpha Center is probably still running tests on both of them, and they may have even started creating future children using Rhea's DNA. But for now, all we know is they're alive, but what their future holds is unclear. Okay, okay. Ah, hello. There's a lot of controversy surrounding this game, mainly from the events that took place in 2009. Some people claiming that the creators were careless and didn't care for the safety of its players and constantly put them in danger. While I do believe there are certain things that got out of hand, I do not believe the creators actually put their players in real danger, despite the rumors that have circulated over the years. We learned a lot about, about you know, the live ops part of running a game like this. And um, I mean, it took a real toll on us. We both were tired. Yeah, no, I mean, I had set up literally, you know, uh, my bed right adjacent to the to the workstation, so where I could actually <laughs> sit up in bed. The two gentlemen you just heard are the creators behind this elaborate game, Rob Orton and Patrick Macasano. I reached out to them back in August of 2018, asking if they could provide me with more insight into what happened back in 2009 and 2014. They sent me a backlog of files featuring images, videos, planning sheets, forum threads, game assets, everything I needed to help get a better understanding of what actually took place. I think with some of our content that wasn't necessarily, you know, that rational, <laughs> it was <laughs> It was very, you know, a lot of mysticism, a lot of, you know, just pure emotional draw. We were bringing in people that weren't normally, you know, playing ARGs or might not have been interested. The, the huge South American contingent, um, you know, there was uh, a lot of actually Russians, um, interestingly enough. To top it all off, they offered to join me in a Skype call and address some of the more controversial moments during their games. We'll get to the controversies and I'll point out a couple of things that intrigued me. And it's up to you if you want to obviously actually elaborate on how that actually happened, or you could just obviously say no. No, there's nothing too sensitive. It's 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 really interesting though. I I think it all comes down to to our yeah conceptual yeah, I, it, it, vision it, it, versus expectations. I, it's a really interesting topic. It is. Topics. I find it very interesting. One of the biggest rumors that is spreading around right now is that Rob and Patrick named Alpha Center after a real Russian organization. This is false. There is a real Russian military firm called Center Alpha, but this did not exist in 2009. Center Alpha appeared four years after Rob and Patrick's game took place. The Russian organization that you saw put together in the game was created entirely from scratch. Some articles have also claimed Rob and Patrick named their Junsui sisters after a real terrorist group called the Sisterhood. This is also false. Rob and Patrick created a group called the Sisterhood for their game. They put together some fake footage featuring this group to help tell their story. Someone then took the footage they made and placed it on a real terrorist watch list. Despite all the footage being fake, many perceived it as being real, which helped create the illusion the creators were going for. Blending fiction and reality, you know, what we've done in 2009, a lot of it was this idea of, you know, how critical are you of information, of things you read online, how discerning are you? Do you go and check multiple sources? All these things that, you know, we should have learned in, in eighth grade. With 2014, a lot of this was, you know, privacy, you know, features. Like, look at these features that you know, we're calling attention, I guess, to pretty mundane, you know, commonly used features in some respects, you know. There were a lot of apps that were sending your, your location uh, mm -hmm. to somebody's server, but we were calling attention to them in, in fun ways, you know, in yeah. thriller-esque <laughs> ways. <laughs> and you would have thought that the way people reacted, you, some people, that they were just completely oblivious, you know, to, to, to the fact that these mechanisms exi existed. People have also mentioned that Rob and Patrick dox their users who stepped out of line. I asked Patrick and Rob about this, and they explained how they did actually use people's real names at certain points during the game. I think this must have been the first kind of controversy after the Unforum, where I think one of the characters called out some people's uh, real names. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't real, you know, 
be mm. called doxing. That was no. people having very visible names attached. You know, they might have had uh, forum names, but then, you know, on Twitter or wherever we, we found it, it, it was right there. We weren't mm. going out trying to invade, you know, reveal people's um, identities, information. We weren't publishing people's addresses or you know, <laughs> workplaces. If we knew their names, first names from easily found public information, we just called them that. Names. Yeah. yeah. Despite most of the controversies being surrounded by misinformation, there is one controversy that did have some consequences, and it was when users of 4chan got involved. I do know what the other thing that we that we really left out with with the whole uh, hysteria in 2009, the, the big controversy was the involvement of 4chan. Of course, 4chan has become much more notorious since then, but this is like before Anonymous, this is before, you know, I think they had just done Project Chanology, which was their um, op against Scientology. I think they'd just done that in, two in 2009 when we released Junko Junsi. When, when they discovered, you know, th these various sites and the controversies that were going on, especially this Junsi sisterhood, they, they immediately took, uh, of course, the side of chaos. And that that's, you know, I don't think we held that um, by the ears really uh, successfully. Uh, they, they started going out and doxing people and um, causing a lot of havoc. Had they known more about 4chan at the time, they probably would have tried their best to keep these particular users out of the game. One of the final controversies that a lot of people tend to bring up is the North Korean phone number. When users solved a certain puzzle, they found documents that featured a real North Korean phone number. Pat, do you want, do you think you should tell that, that the, story? The North Korean? <laughs> the North yeah, Korean. We had set up a bunch of websites, some of which were more in the you know core storyline than others. So among the websites that we set up was the website for Alpha Center. If I had to imagine what a, a Russian private military corporation website would have looked like, I mean, you know, these guys did a really great job of approximating that. And on that, there was a, a form that people could fill out if they were interested in joining up. And there was an email address that, you know, you could, if you had any kind of interest in, uh, in making business. So, the story begins one morning when Pat awakes to find in the inbox a letter from a, uh, a young fellow who's doing business on behalf of the North Korean government. <laughs> Is that, yeah, actually, um, Pete, he was then a Spanish citizen. He subsequently became um, a full North Korean citizen. He's uh, to this day works for the foreign ministry, um, but he was, you know, doing a lot of outreach. And yeah, we got this email basically inviting us, you know, to do it was a business inquiry. Um, I guess he was shopping for private military corporations. And <laughs> yeah, I can't remember, you know, the exact content of the, of the inquiry, but it, it started this conversation and pretty soon in character because we never break character. Mm. We started asking if the North Koreans could provide refurbishment uh, weapons and labor for um, mines because we were excavating secret underground military installations, of course, in our story. <laughs> so none of this was a problem. Um, they wanted to bid on it. There was, you know, some some technical information exchanged and um, the company, I believe, got invited to a business conference in Pyongyang, which we didn't go to. We were tempted. I know there was some discussion. <laughs> um <laughs> We're, we're still here standing talking to you. So um, <laughs> so what ha ended up happening is, you know, we, we decided that, hey, this this is great content. This is something fun for our fans to uncover. Let's kind of embed some story in here. Let's talk about, let's do some exposition and then have this come out later. Let's have this be a clue, some, you know, some trove of, of information details that the, the players can find later. And that's what we did. Of course, the controversy and the, the kind of scare for those, you know, intrepid players who found it was when they realized that the contact uh, phone number and, you know, on the signature field, which we did not redact, was real. That, you know, these were actual real mm. North Korean agents. And hey, guys, don't call that number. We had a, I believe it was a, one of our kind of super fans, a military intel uh, analyst who said, guys, hey, guys, that's a real number. Don't call it. You are going to start an international incident. And, um, that was exciting for people. At the end of the day, Rob and Patrick just wanted to create something that was fun for players to get involved in. They never intended to put anyone in actual danger. They just wanted to create the feel of danger. 
Kind of like how we go to horror movies to be scared. They wanted you to come into their game and be spooked by what you might find. I mean, it was it was fun. I mean, that was, you know, I mean, not every day, but most days we had a really good time making this thing. Could the creators have handled certain circumstances better? Yeah, definitely. This was an ARG that got out of hand at certain points when interacting with its fan base. But the game itself was never actually as careless as people first thought. In fact, it was incredibly well produced and well researched, and I personally believe it deserves more recognition than it gets. Almost a hundred people worked on this ARG, and they never got the chance to be fully credited after the game ended. So, I asked Patrick to send me the names of every single person involved during 2009 and 2014 for Junko Junsui. I've put all credits in a pinned comment underneath this video, and I encourage anyone who gets chance to take a look at it for yourself. Will this game ever continue is unclear, but for now, this is where its story draws to a close. Rhea is alive, and clearly in better condition than she was in the White Room, while her sisters roam the areas of Russia, watching and waiting to take down the infamous Alpha Center.